All right, good. Are we working here? Okay, good. Good Wednesday evening, everybody. Live and direct from House Onik. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Conditions in the Mid-South at this time looking pretty nice. It's just warm and muggy out across the Mid-South and again, continuing to see the possibility of some more showers and thunderstorms as we get into the rest of the forecast. So again, we do not see too much of anything else uh, in there in the way of major amounts of problems for right now. But again, if you do have any plans for being outdoors, it is going to again be the very much on the warm and muggy side out across the Mid-South. So this again could be a bit of a problem for outdoor activities. So please keep that in mind if you're going to be doing anything in around the Mid-South area throughout the course of the next couple of days. We'll talk more about that in the complete forecast in just a little bit. Thanks to everybody on the Periscope for joining us and also on the Twitter page as well. Really appreciate you having you along and as of right now again pretty much on the quiet side for the time being but we will see again uh, the possibility for more areas of problems as we get into around the rest of the forecast. We also have, again, a lot going on out into the tropics, as you might expect. So as of right now, this is something that is going to be, again, the possibility of some more problems for the East Coast. And again, this is going to be something to watch out for in the next few days. Pardon me for just a second while I toot a little bit about what I'm doing uh, for the time being. Just make sure everybody knows what's going on so that they can all join us, and that takes care of that. Okay, thank you very much again for dropping on by. If you've got any questions, concerns, comments, please make certain you drop them into the comments section. We'd love to see a little bit more about what everybody has to say for this evening, and give me two shakes while I try to get the Facebook crowd in here as well. Naturally, as you might have guessed, they're having some problems getting uh, online at this point. So as of right now, okay, good. There we go. So whether or not that lasts or not, we'll have to wait and see. Good evening again to everybody. It is just past about 8.20 p.m. It is a quiet Wednesday night. A little bit more quiet than last night. Not that much showing up in the way of showers or thunderstorms this time around, but there will still be that chance out there throughout the course of the rest of the next a uh, couple of days. Cindy Slot 13, thanks for joining us on Periscope and Twitter. Got three people joining us on Facebook at this time, so thanks to everybody for dropping on by for the evening tonight. Currently on radar, not a lot of much of anything going on. Again, things are very quiet and should remain so. More chances of showers and thunderstorms will be popping up as we get into the course of the forecast, uh, heading into the rest of the day tomorrow. Again, going to be hot and humid conditions all around the area. So if you have any plans for outdoors, that's going to be the main thing that we're going to be looking at for now. This tropical weather, it'd be nice if it would get out of here, but unfortunately it's not going to be going too much of anywhere anytime soon. Uh, this would be nice, again, to get rid of some of that activity out there, but it's just not going to be happening. So expecting more of the same across much of the Mid-South area. Let's try to cool you off a little bit. Let's go to the fourth rock from the sun and show you more about what's going on there. Uh, this information coming to us just a couple of days ago. Matter of fact, uh, yesterday's weather on Mars showing up as temperatures, again, a little bit better for this time of the year. Again, a little bit chillier out that direction as well. We've got a temperature of about 20.2 degrees for a maximum, and that was below zero, and that was the warmest temperature of the day out across the Martian plains. Again, from the Curiosity rover, uh, if you've been following along with that, good opportunity again to see a little bit more about that going on with Mars. We'll show you the address on that coming up in just a little bit. Temperature for ground temperature, 14 degrees above zero Fahrenheit, minus 124.6 below zero. Again, this all comes to us from the Curiosity rover wandering around Mars. And as of right now, again, a very chilly day. So 20 degrees below zero for a high, pretty comparable to places like Antarctica at this time of the year. If you'd like to know more, please visit our website uh, for the Mars rover, not our website, but again, the website we all go to plural as we say that there. Jet Propulsion Laboratory, again more information to find out more, go to uh, mars.nasa.gov and they'll keep you updated as to what to look for and where to get all that information from. Here in the Mid-South, some beautiful sunsets taking place from our weather bug cameras. Sunset rapidly fading for tonight. Matter of fact, pretty much already gone for much of the area. Mostly clear for right now, but there will be more chances for fog around portions of the Mid-South area uh, for later on tonight. Thanks to everybody for joining us on uh, 
Periscope up to about 15 people there for right now, so welcome aboard, and all two of you on Facebook, thanks for stopping on by. Uh, Mary Jewel, South Fulton, Tennessee, uh, a little bit cooler next week, not by much, but just by a little bit. Kevin Dunn, thank you very much for dropping on by. Uh, temperatures across the Mid-South just past 8 o'clock, again back into the mid-upper 70s to around the lower 80s, so not seeing a lot out there that comes to rather cool conditions in the Mid-South, and that's going to be, unfortunately, the rest we have for the next couple of days. Currently seeing again uh, mid to lower 80s downtown around the Memphis area and 84 degrees right now at Memphis International Airport. That's some of the warmer numbers across Shelby County and likewise across much of the rest of the Mid-South area. Okay, big weather story of the day. Naturally, as you might expect, is of course the tropics. Things are going again about as you might expect at this point. We're continuing again to see a lot of problems out that direction uh, with the tropics at this time. What's left of Lee is not much of anything, but the National Hurricane Center is keeping an eye on the leftover disturbance that was Lee because this could regenerate into something, but it's not doing too well. And why is that? We'll tell you a little bit more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Jose, tropical storm, winds of about 65 miles per hour, sitting just off down to the southeast of Cape Cod. Not a threat for the Mid-South area, not even close. Nothing developing at this time uh, into and around the Gulf of Mexico, so things are very quiet there. Maria is, of course, the big weather story. Hit Puerto Rico early this morning. Landfall about uh, dawn patrol. Now down to a Category 2 storm right between uh, the area around Puerto Rico and Hispaniola around the Dominican Republic. 110 mile per hour winds. It is still a dangerous hurricane and expected to go again a little bit farther back toward the north. We'll talk about that coming up here again in just a little bit. We again see the possibility of this uh, system continuing to gather a little bit more speed as we look into and around uh, the area of the next couple of days. So this could be something again uh, we could see the possibility of seeing more potential danger from this from the Bahamas into the next couple of days. Computer models for Jose, uh, a lot of fruit basket upset here, but it looks like over the next couple of days, it's a good possibility that Jose is going to make its way out to sea a little bit over the next 24, call it 36 hours, somewhere in there, and then making its way back toward the East Coast states. It looks like somewhere expecting a landfall somewhere around the Delmarva Peninsula. So again, D.C., Philly, Baltimore, south of the tri-state area, that's where we could again be seeing uh, more problems with this. It looks like probably a tropical storm, maybe even a tropical depression, but again, that could change very easily as it's going to kind of hover right over that Gulf Stream current. So we could see again a decent amount of regeneration with this. So far, again, not seeing, again, hopefully a lot of regeneration, but again, this is something to watch, especially if you're traveling anywhere around D.C. or up to around New York, uh, Pittsburgh, anywhere around Maryland, uh, Delaware. This is where we could see a lot of wind. We're already getting some pretty heavy surf from this, so this could be, again, just a bit of a problem out there. The wind field around uh, Maria was just absolutely intense this morning and continues to be that way. The center wind field at this time, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, measured in again about 105, 110 mile per hour right between the area of Puerto Rico and the eastern side of the Dominican Republic. And has had a pretty steady path right there. The eye wall firmly on shore by about uh, midnight through overnight tonight and into around early this afternoon. What's left of the storm making its way back up to the uh, north and to the west and will continue to be that way. Models for Maria are looking a lot better for not as worse uh, landfall. This is definitely not Irma. It's not taking that northwesterly track at this point, so that's good news, but it does seem to be following Jose's path back to the north, and could that mean another loop-the-loop -loop in our future? Well, that's possible, not entirely likely at this point, but we will again be watching this, so keep it tuned to News Channel 3, and we'll keep you updated on what we're going to be seeing from this as we go throughout the next couple of days on here. The good news at this time is that off the coast of Africa, that green to yellow that you see uh, at that point is again showing some very good news for us. 
in that Lee is on the western edge of that storm system, right back between the huge circulation that is Maria and Jose. The dust that is coming in from off the Sahara is doing a good job of squashing any new storm development. There might be an impulse or two coming off uh, the African west coast, which is how these things start as an impulse of energy, but the good news at this time is that the dust and the sand from off the Sahara moves out over the Atlantic and does a good job of blocking a lot of the sun and that helps to kind of quiet things down, diminish stuff. Plus there's high pressure out there as well so that's helping to keep things very quiet and that's basically why we do not have anything else really developing out that direction for right now. So Lee is way out there in the Atlantic, but the rest of the area not doing too bad for right now. Here's hoping it stays that way, and thanks very much to the Sahara for sending all that dust this direction. If you'd like to see more of these graphics, a great place to go to is Mike's weather page. Uh, it's available at SpaghettiModels.com, great website to have for something like that. It's got tons of weather information about the tropics from numerous, numerous dependable locations. Uh, we're not talking Farmer's Almanac type stuff here. So good news on that. Tons of information available, again, uh, from SpaghettiModels.com. A uh, great place to bookmark just in case you need any of that information out there for everything. All right, let's go back to our neck of the woods and show you what's going on. Again, for right now, uh, we have the possibility of some drier air in our future, just not immediately in our future. What you're looking at here is a water vapor satellite. The drier air showing up as pockets of darker uh, conditions and the lighter the gray scale to white that's cloud cover and a lot of the moisture that we have been seeing for the last few days and as you can see as we zoom out a little bit you can take a look down to the Gulf of Mexico and this whole area is just covered over by tropical moisture so if you've been wondering why you've been doing a decent job of sweating over the last few days this is it and it doesn't look like it's going to be stopping anytime soon so we're looking at some pretty sultry conditions out there throughout the next several days as long as this very warm and moist air continues to stick around the area so not much good news here unfortunately at this time. National Weather Service in Memphis not showing anything in the way of a major problem over the next about two to five days so little if anything really to be expected here. Uh, afternoon thunderstorms yeah beyond that probably not all that much and again the current loop has Jose kind of curving its way back to the west as a tropical depression as we go toward this weekend uh, could be a problem for travel in the tri-state area really good news out west as we are seeing a new cold front approach and move over the Rockies and that's bringing a ton of rain and snow and cooler weather really great news for the smoke jumpers out there but it's going to need a good soaking to make certain that all those fires are basically completely and totally out let's go and take a look and see what's going on in our neck of the woods again here are temperatures again for the overnight period back into the lower to mid 70s not much better for tomorrow temperatures again returning to the lower to mid 90s chances of showers and thunderstorms greatest in that green area that you see over toward the tennessee river valley and that's about as good as it gets again for right now low temperatures thursday night back in the lower to mid 70s friday's high temperatures you know not really seeing much of anything changing here and the possibility of a few showers and thunderstorms could be sticking around temperatures by friday night if you're heading out to friday night football it is going to be very warm as pretty typical for this time of the year uh, fall begins on friday afternoon but it's not going to feel that way so you're thinking about the sweaters and the letter jackets and the stadium blankets and maybe taking along some hot cocoa to the game because it's going to be chilly forget about it because temperatures are going to be back in the mid 80s across the mid south and only in the upper 70s by the time the game ends uh, Friday night for Friday night football. Weekend outlook, lower 90s for Saturday. Isolated stray showers and thunderstorms possible. Saturday night low temperatures, mid to upper 60s to lower 70s. Stop me if you've heard this one before. Isolated chance of a shower Saturday night. High temperatures on Sunday, again, back in the mid to upper 80s to lower 90s. So not much better than that. Ignore the crunching sound that you may hear. That's our shorky dog. Uh, crunching on a water bottle inside of an old sock. It's her favorite toy, but unfortunately she chews it like right down underneath the table that I'm working on. So, yeah, if that does give you an idea of what I deal with. There. Do you mind? Hey, if you, I'm, I'm kind of doing things here. 
Yeah, thank yeah, thank 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 you very much. Well, if you're not gonna play tug of war, <sighs> excuse the interruption on that. Anyway, for the next couple of days after the weekend, back into the 90s, you get the pretty much the idea on that. Severe weather at this time, nothing to take a look at. We have nothing from the storm prediction center. So, seriously. I swear she does this on purpose. Anyway, this is looking pretty good for the evening hours tonight and into the next couple of days. We're just really not seeing too much of anything helping us out with cooling us off or giving us huge amounts of rainfall. Could be some patchy fog into tomorrow morning as well, so please keep that in mind. If you're on Periscope and Twitter, join me on my Facebook page. It's a great opportunity to keep up to date with what's going on in and around the Mid-South area. We'd love to have you uh, along for the ride, so definitely want to stop by and find out more. Uh, Facebook.com slash Austin Onik, W-R-E-G. And that'll help you to get uh, connected there as well. If you're already on Twitter, you already know about that. Uh, thanks, to everybody, for stopping on by tonight and also on Google+. Uh, also want to pass this along, too. And I try to put this together every single year uh, to make sure everybody knows more about this. Again, if you have never become a storm spotter and would like to, this is your opportunity. What is this? It's not storm chasing. I'll tell you that much right now. If you want to be a storm chaser, you've got to go uh, somewhere else and learn about that, per hopefully with professionals, not becoming what's... Uh, Professor Charles Doswell called storm chasing yahoos. We don't need anything like that going on. The main thing you want to look at is becoming a storm spotter. The National Weather Service needs your eyes, ears, and brains to help look for severe weather. And the classes are going on starting next week, yesterday, on Tuesday evening, the 26th. Uh, the first meeting will be coming up in Lafayette County in Oxford, Mississippi at the Fire Department Central Station 50, County Road 1032 in Oxford. Uh, two days after that, one day from tomorrow, 28th of September, Quitman County, Marks Community House, 200 Pecan or Pecan Street, depending on how you pronounce that, in Marks, Mississippi, and many coming up throughout the next couple of days. And all that information is posted on the National Weather Service website. That's at uh, weather.gov slash M-E-G. I'll be posting that on my Facebook page as well. Why are they doing this right now? The Mid-South has a second severe weather season peak. You may have just moved here, you may have never heard of it before, but it does happen roughly between about late October and roughly early December, somewhere in there, as the patterns shift and change, you can get some pretty decent amounts of severe weather around here. And if you don't believe me, just ask the people around uh, Houston High School in and around Germantown, Collierville area that got hit I can never remember if it was Christmas or uh, Thanksgiving, but somewhere around November or December, tornado hit southeast Shelby County. It can, it does happen, and this is why you need to be ready to go for this particular situation. And this is one of the best ways that you can get ready for this is by getting ready for these, by knowing what to look for. The National Weather Service meteorologists and personnel will teach you what to look for. They'll tell, give you a special toll-free number to help make certain that you've got uh, instant contact with the National Weather Service to tell them what they're looking for. Only 10% of storms are severe, but the best thing about you being a spotter is you get to use eyes, ears, and your own judgment to call stuff in so they can make the decision as to whether or not something is severe. Your decision, your volunteering could help save lives, and the more volunteer spotters we have that know what need to go on, the better off we're all going to be and safely protected from severe weather. Yeah, thank you. Just other room will be nice. Thank you. <sighs> Communicating with a dog. Anyway, for tonight, if you have any questions on this, I'll put the link into the comments section to find out more and uh, call the National Weather Service. Uh, let them know about it. The email address is on the page as well. So tons of great weather information available for you there. Seven-day forecast. Again, first official day of fall begins on Friday. Temperatures still looking in the mid to upper 80s throughout the course of the next several days. I'll have more on the complete forecast Coming up bright and early tomorrow morning with Bob and Josh, as usual, Monday through Friday morning on Talkback Live. It's a great way to get your day going with news, weather, and sports across the Mid-South area to keep you updated as to uh, what's going on in and around the area. AM 730, or if you can't listen to the uh, broadcast over the air, 
listen to it online at www.talkbacklivenetwork.org and you'll be able to find out a lot more there online and that'll start at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. We'll keep you updated as to what's going on with the forecast overnight. Todd Demers will have more coming up on Daybreak tomorrow morning and of course Tim and Jim will be doing a lot more into the next several days on air and on the internet as well. Don't forget to send a hearty thank you to uh, Jim Jaggers. Go Jim Go starts pretty soon helping out Labonner Children's Hospital in Memphis and another year of Jim writing uh, several hundred miles around the Mid-South area. So if you see him, stop him, donate what you can, or just go to WREG.com and you'll be able to do a lot more good there. Live and direct from House Onik in Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. I want to thank everybody for joining us on Periscope, Twitter, and Facebook tonight, and more coming up later tomorrow on News Channel 3 on air and online. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>